This is Mac OS X. New hardware from Apple, making way for new operating systems, and certain stuff says so long. It is Tuesday, the 10th of September, 2024. I'm Ken Ray, and this is news from Mac OS X. Brought to you by yours truly and supported by people like you, patrons through Patreon. Find out more and have your support at patreon.com slash macoscan, huh? What do you say, huh? Yeah. Huge day of announcements for Apple. Monday saw the company announce some new iPhones, one new Apple Watch, and some new AirPods. The company also reacquainted the world with the whole Apple intelligence thing. We will start working our way through hardware. Apple announced somewhere between two and a half and three and a half new pairs of AirPods on Monday. AirPods 4, AirPods 4 with active noise cancellation, AirPods Max, and I'm going to give AirPods Pro 2 honorable mention thanks to an upcoming feature. Starting with the AirPods Max, the only changes seem to be new colors, midnight, starlight, blue, orange, and purple, and USB-C charging. No bargains to be had here. Didn't they have USB-C charging? Well, they kept talking about it. Anyway, as I say, no bargains to be had here. Apple's over-the-ear cans will still run buyers $549. Orders are being taken now. The headphones will ship and land on store shelves on Friday, the 20th of September. Delivering a massive improvement in sound quality, Apple says AirPods 4 feature a new acoustic architecture, low distortion driver, and high dynamic range amplifier, and add personalized spatial audio with dynamic head tracking. The stoppers also feature voice isolation, low latency, head gesture controls, and a force sensor on the stem to control certain functions. The case now offers USB-C charging and is more than 10% smaller in volume than its predecessor, perfect for losing and having to buy again. The biggest difference between AirPods 4 and AirPods 4 with active noise cancellation, one of them has active noise cancellation. I'll let you figure out which one. AirPods 4 will run buyers $129, AirPods 4 with active noise cancellation will run 179. Both are available to order now. They will ship and hit stores on the 20th of September. At long last, Apple is doing something with the AirPods line that I have been waiting for Apple to do. Assuming approval by regulators, something the company seems to be taking as a given, the two-year-old AirPods Pro 2 will be able to function as over-the-counter hearing aids. They'll also be able to tell you whether you need hearing aids. Building on years of work in hearing health, Apple says it is introducing an end-to-end -end experience focusing on prevention, awareness, and assistance when it comes to hearing issues. Prevention is down to the passive noise cancellation of the ear tips and the active noise cancellation of active noise cancellation. Awareness is one of the big game changers. The company is introducing a scientifically validated hearing test feature with AirPods Pro and a compatible iPhone or iPad, expanding the ability for users to quickly check their hearing from the comfort of their home in minutes. And if you need or would benefit from hearing aids, AirPods Pro can be those too. The company says AirPods Pro add over-the-counter hearing aid capability for users with mild to moderate hearing loss, Using the personalized hearing profile from the hearing test, this new feature seamlessly transforms AirPods Pro into a clinical-grade hearing aid. Again, that assumes regulatory approval, which Apple seems to be assuming. The company says the hearing test and hearing aid features are expected to receive marketing authorization from global health authorities soon and will be available this fall in more than 100 countries and regions, including the U.S., Germany, and Japan. AirPods Pro 2 are available to order and pick up now because they've been out for two years. Moving away from the ears, there was really only one new watch on offer on Monday, Apple Watch Series 10. 
The company says the new device is 10% thinner than its Series 7, 8, and 9 models. They've made the display bigger, though, offering up to 30% more active screen area than Series 4 through 6, and up to 9% more than 7 through 9. The always-on display also has a faster refresh rate, refreshing once per second versus previous refresh rates of once per minute. Also, Apple says audio can now be played back through the built-in speaker on Apple Watch Series 10, and I gotta say, I am really looking forward to hearing that from other people at the grocery store. Now, if I seemed excited earlier about the AirPods Pro hearing features, I am for a couple of reasons. First, I have been waiting for Apple to get into this market since the FDA approved over-the-counter hearing aids a couple of years ago. And the second reason, I was diagnosed last year with mild to moderate hearing loss. So yeah, looking forward to trying this out. There is a medical advancement about as exciting on Apple Watch this year. Building on health features already built into Apple Watch, the company says the wearable now offers a feature to help identify signs of sleep apnea, or will, when watchOS 11 rolls out. Again, pending approval from regulators. According to the Apple Watch press release, sleep apnea is a potentially serious condition where breathing stops repeatedly during sleep. The condition, which is estimated to impact more than 1 billion people worldwide, goes undiagnosed in most cases. If left untreated, sleep apnea can have important consequences on health, including an increased risk of hypertension, type 2 diabetes, and cardiac issues. To help detect, Apple says its sleep apnea algorithm analyzes breathing disturbance data so Apple Watch can notify a user if the data indicates consistent signs of sleep apnea. The notification will include the time period when potential sleep apnea occurred and educational materials on the importance of seeking treatment. While the sleep apnea step was a central part of the Glow Time event, you might not need a brand new watch for it, though yours will need to be relatively recent. In addition to Apple Watch 10, the sleep apnea detection will also function on Apple Watch 9 and the second Apple Watch Ultra. Available in 42mm and 46mm sizes in a great looking polished jet black aluminum, as well as a new rose gold aluminum and silver aluminum case, the high end has thrown off stainless steel for three titanium finishes, natural, gold, and slate. Apple Watch Series 10 starts at $399. Apple is taking orders now. They will ship and hit stores on Friday, the 20th of September. As for Apple Watch Ultra 3, there is not one. The only change to Apple Watch Ultra 2 was the hue. The company now offers a black titanium option. Still priced at $799, the color can be ordered today and worn on Friday, the 20th of September. Moving on to iPhone. I'm not sure this is true, but it felt like we're circling back to a few years ago, when the biggest differences between the entry-level iPhone and the pro end of the line were about the camera and form factor. That's not quite right. While the entire iPhone 16 line runs a version of Apple's A18 processor, iPhone 16 and iPhone 16 Plus run the A18, while iPhone 16 Pro and iPhone 16 Pro Max run the A18 Pro. But they can all accommodate Apple intelligence, they've all got an action button now, and they all come with a button to activate camera control. Now, you may remember I got an iPhone 15 Pro Max last year, thanks to a sponsorship from American Tech Support, online at americantechsupport.com. No, they're not sponsoring today. When Apple said at WWDC that my phone would support Apple intelligence, I was really happy that nothing would make me want a new iPhone. Camera control is really cool. It is way more than I need, so no, there's no part of me that's considering an iPhone 16 anything. But when I get my iPhone 18 or iPhone 19, I'm really looking forward to camera control. 
Should we talk about what that is? Yeah, let's talk about it. It's all the functions that you fiddle with on the screen in a button, starting with calling up the camera app. Sure, the action button could do that, but that's it. With camera control, it calls up the camera app, then lets the user access such features as zoom, exposure, depth of field, and so on, simply by pressing or sliding your finger along the button. And it runs along the entire iPhone 16 line, as will Apple Intelligence. Analysts looking for a primer on Apple Intelligence, by the way, something that'll really let John and Jane Q know what it is and why they'd want it. Yeah, they really didn't get a lot more than they got at WWDC earlier this year. Then again, John and Jane Q were probably not watching WWDC earlier this year, so Glow Time may have been their first taste. Or maybe they're suddenly interested in Apple's online newsroom, where Apple issued a press release on Apple Intelligence. AI features highlighted include writing tools to help users refine their words by rewriting, proofreading, and summarizing text nearly everywhere they write, including mail, notes, pages, and third-party apps. There are improvements for photos, including a natural language search for specific photos and videos, as well as to find specific moments in videos. Apple says the Memories feature also gets an AI tweak. Users will be able to create movies simply by typing a description. Seeping into Creepy, Apple says the new Cleanup tool can identify and remove distracting objects in the background of a photo without accidentally altering the subject. And Siri is said to see massive improvement. Also, Apple Intelligence should help people prioritize mail, messages, notifications, and more by prioritizing those things for those people. All that hits sometime in October with the release of iOS and iPadOS 18.1 and macOS Sequoia 15.1 for iPhone 15 Pro, iPhone 15 Pro Max, and later models of iPhone as well as any Mac or iPad with an M1 processor or later. At that point, it will still be U.S. English only, though Apple says the features will expand to include localized English in Australia, Canada, New Zealand, South Africa, and the U.K. this December. Support for other languages, including Chinese, French, Chinese, Japanese, Chinese, and Spanish, And did I mention Chinese? I'm not sure I did. Yeah, that's going to hit sometime in 2025. Now, the really fun stuff like Image Playground, Genmoji, Personal Context for Siri, On-Screen Awareness, Third-Party App Integration, and Optional Integration with ChatGPT will happen later this year in the U.S. And good luck to all of us trying to suss out where else and when else it will be where and when. I'm sorry. I'm all over the blessed map here. We started talking about iPhone, then I jumped straight off into features. Kind of weird to see Craig Federighi featured so prominently during the iPhone event. Speaks to what an amalgam of software and hardware this event was expected to be. Anyway, hardware. Apple on Monday announced iPhone 16, iPhone 16 Plus, iPhone 16 Pro, and iPhone 16 Pro Max. Features new to the consumer end of the line include the aforementioned more powerful A18 processor, the action button, the camera control button, and a 48 megapixel fusion camera with a 2x telephoto option, as well as the ability to capture ultra-wide images and spatial images and video for Apple Vision Pro. Does it come in colors? You bet. Nothing amazing, in my opinion. And hey, has anybody else noticed the disappearance of product red over the last little while? Anyway, the consumer end of the iPhone 16 line comes in five colors. Black, white, pink, teal, and ultramarine. Apple calls them bold colors, making me wonder whether they know what the word bold means. Not saying teal and ultramarine can't be bold. I'm saying these versions are not. 
Starting prices are the same as last year, $799 for iPhone 16, $899 for iPhone 16 Plus. Orders start this Friday, the 13th of September at 5 a.m. Pacific. Deliveries and in-store availability will hit one week later, Friday, the 20th of September. As for the Pro Phones, not many new features, though marked improvements to be sure. Among them, the aforementioned more powerful A18 Pro processor, larger display sizes, 6.3 inches on the iPhone 16 Pro and 6.9 inches on the iPhone 16 Pro Max, according to Apple's Pro Phone press release. The camera control button, Lesai. The ability to record 4K 120 frames per second in video or slow mo. Amazing levels of audio capture for prosumer video shoots, and the list goes on. Once again, the prices stay the same. iPhone 16 Pro starts at $999, with iPhone 16 Pro Max starting at $1199. Available in black titanium, natural titanium, white titanium, and desert titanium. The iPhone 16 Pro phones go up for order this Friday, the 13th of September at 5 a.m. Pacific. They will land in buyers' hot little hands one week later, Friday, the 20th of September. You probably picked up on a trend, with the exception of AirPods Pro 2, which have been available for two years. All of the hardware Apple announced on Monday will be out on the 20th of September. So what? of the operating systems to run them. Those and other operating systems will be out in just under a week. Fine print on Apple's various press releases has iOS 18 and watchOS 11 out as free updates next Monday, the 16th of September. Meanwhile, pieces from Apple Insider say same goes for iPadOS 18 and macOS Sequoia 15. While I've not seen this confirmed, it's hard to imagine that tvOS 18 won't be out the same day. As for VisionOS 2, my gut says yes, especially given the garden Apple planted on Monday. I am referring to seeds of release candidates. Several pieces from Mac Rumors on Monday had Apple making RCs available to developers. Those included iOS and iPadOS 18, macOS 15 Sequoia, watchOS 11, tvOS 18, and visionOS 2. As tends to be the way, Apple heralding new products usually means a quick, quiet death for some old ones. Compiling them in one convenient list, iMore says products known to have taken the long walk off Apple's short pier include iPhone 15 Pro, iPhone 15 Pro Max, AirPods 2nd and 3rd generation, Apple Watch Series 9, iPhone 13 and iPhone 13 Mini, and Apple's fine-woven iPhone cases. Strangely, you can still get a fine-woven something for your iPhone. A piece from 9to5Mac says the Cupertino company is still selling the fine-woven MagSafe wallet, which is weird. If you're wondering what you can replace your fine woven case with, a piece from Mac Rumor says Apple is subbing in cases in silicone and plastic. Kind of funny considering fine woven's eco friendly nature. Or maybe you would like a case from Beats. Another piece from Mac Rumor says the Apple subsidiary has announced its own line of iPhone 16 cases with support for MagSafe and iPhone's new. <sighs> Camera control. There were other features featured during Monday's Glow Time event. If you missed it, it is still there to be seen. Replays are available now at Apple's event site, apple.com slash events, and on YouTube, youtube.com slash apple. Podcasts are available as well, both audio and video versions. Just search for Apple event or something, wherever you get your podcasts. We'll poke around for reaction to Apple's announcements tomorrow. We will also take that time to catch up on other Apple news. Mac OS Can, brought to you by me, 
and supported by people like you, patrons through Patreon. Find out more and add your support at patreon.com slash macoscan. Huh? Huh? What do you say? Yeah. Advertising handled by Backbeat Media. Online at backbeatmedia.com. You can reach me a couple of ways. Info at macoscan.com or call 716-780-4080. Until next time, that is news from Mac OS Ken. I'm Ken Ray. We truly live in an age of wonders.